Welcome to episode five of this Comfy UI series. Today, I want to show you how you can run Stable Diffusion 3 Medium on Comfy UI, where to get the models, which model is better, and how it compares to the SDXL model. First, make sure your Comfy UI is updated so you can run Stable Diffusion 3 on it. Uh, click on the manager, then click the button that says update all. Um, after the update, you will receive a message. Uh, click on restart, and then you should have the latest Comfy UI version. Now we need to download a Stable Diffusion 3 model. The easiest way is to visit the Civit AI website, then search for Stable Diffusion 3. It should look like this and is uploaded by this user. There are different versions of the model available, but which one should you choose? If you scroll down, you can find a quick start guide. Uh, by clicking on that link, you can read more about it on that page. The SD3 Media model, for example, doesn't include text encoders. This model includes everything necessary to run, including the floating point 8 version of the text encoder. Another model includes clip, but does not have the large T5XXL text encoder. So if you go back and scroll down to the end, you'll see that the original model can be also found on Hugging Face by clicking where it says uh, here. You can visit that page to see more information about the models and the actual files available for download. And keep in mind that to access these models, you'll need to provide some details, such as an email address and you know, other information. That's why Civit AI is the easiest option for downloading. We have a total of four different models, each in different sizes. I won't download the first one because it doesn't include text encoders, so you would need to download them separately, which I don't really recommend. I will download the other three models to test them and, and show you the differences. If your video card doesn't have much video RAM, get the five gigabyte version because it includes clip. If you have a better video card, go for the 10 gigabyte or even the 15 gigabyte version. Most people can download the five gigabyte version because it includes clip. Click on the download button, then find the folder where you want to place the files. It should be in the models folder, then in um, checkpoints, just like where you have your other stable diffusion models. You can see that I have downloaded all three models, and these are the three models available on Civit AI. I renamed them to match the original names so that people using my workflow will know what each one is. However, you can use any names you prefer for the models. If your Comfy UI was open, make sure to click the refresh button so your models will appear in the interface. I've loaded a basic uh, SDXL workflow similar to what we did in episode three. You can also download it from my Pixaroma Discord server in the channel named AI Resources. Let's load the smallest model version, the one named SD3 Medium, which includes clip. Each model has different recommended settings in the case sampler. So for SD3 Medium, these are the settings you can use. For steps, uh, use either 28 or 30. Set the CFG value to 4.5, the sampler to DPM++2M, plus plus and the scheduler to SGM uniform. Uh, we can give it a quick test by clicking on QPrompt. Uh, as you can see, it runs on an SDXL workflow, but to make it optimal for SD3, we need to adjust one more thing, the empty latent image. Uh, double click on the canvas and search for empty. Select the empty SD3 latent image. As you can see, it's almost identical with just the name being different. However, you know, in the code, it uh, has some different formulas that make it more suitable for SD3. Let's delete the old node and link the case sampler latent to the new node. Um, I'll give it a quick test, and it seems to be working fine. Um, I'll save the workflow for those who prefer to load it directly. As you can see, it's not a complicated workflow, uh, just a different model with different settings in the case sampler and a special SD3 empty latent image. Now I want to compare the results with the other SD3 models to see what the differences are. So I'll press the control key and uh, select all the nodes or use control plus A. Then I'll copy them using the control plus C shortcut. After that, I'll paste them with control plus V. Finally, I'll hold shift and click and drag all the nodes to the desired position here. I'll load the second model, the one with floating point eight in the name. If I run it, you'll see that both workflows are running uh, to make the comparison more accurate. Uh, we need the same seed for both workflows. So we should use a fixed seed instead of a random one. So we also need the same prompt for both. But what if I don't want to keep repeating them in both workflows? What if I want one prompt and one seed and both workflows to take the values from the same place? 
Let's do that. Right click on the positive prompt, then select uh, convert widget to input and choose convert text to input. This option changes a text field into an input port, allowing you to connect and dynamically feed data from other nodes into it. So if I link it to a node called primitive, you'll see that node automatically converts into a string or text node where we can add the positive uh, prompt. Let's do the same for the negative prompt by converting it to an input. Then I'll link it to a primitive node, giving us a place where we can add our negative prompt text. Uh, so basically, we just added an extra node as an extension uh, from this primitive node, connect to the text encoder, and then it goes to the K sampler. The same applies to the negative prompt. Uh, the only difference now is that this primitive node is not directly connected to the model, so we can connect uh, this node to a different text encoder from another workflow. Uh, to make it easier to understand, you know, let's change the title of the primitive node to positive prompt. Um, we'll do the same for the negative prompt node. Uh, we can also change the color to make it more intuitive. Um, set the color of the positive prompt node to green uh, and choose red for the negative prompt node. I will do the same for the second workflow by converting text to input. Uh, now we can connect the positive and negative prompts uh, to this workflow as well. Uh, if I move it to the side, you'll see that the text from both the positive and negative prompts is inserted into both workflows. When I run it, you'll see that it uses the same prompt. However, the seeds are different, so let's fix that as well. Right-click on the case sampler node, go to Convert Widget to Input, and choose Convert Seed to Input. Do the same for the other workflow. Now we can connect the seed input to a primitive node, um, just like we did with the prompt. Um, as you can see, that the node has adapted to what was connected, and now we have the seed um, and the control after generation. Uh, change the control to fixed and enter a number for the seed. And now I'll connect this node to the second workflow as well. This way, both workflows use the same prompt and seed. As you can see, there is a difference between the generations if I queue the prompt. So we have the first model with clip and the second model with floating point eight. Now I will copy and paste the second workflow and switch it to the third model so we can test all the models at once. Don't try this if you have a weak video card as loading multiple models into memory can be demanding. Um, I will connect the seed to the third workflow and then I will also connect the positive and negative prompts. It might look complex, but in reality, um, it's just prompts and a seed that stay in one place and are sent to the other three workflows. To show you all three generations more clearly on the screen, I'll move them around so they fit better. I might also switch the seed to increment after each generation, so I don't have to increase the seed manually if I use the same prompt as the previous generation. Uh, to make it even clearer which generation comes from which model, I will change the exported image prefix to correspond to the model being used. So if I cue the prompt, you'll see that the second and third model generations are quite similar. Let's try it one more time with a different seed. If I zoom in, though you might not be able to see it clearly in the video, you'll notice that, uh, that the second model has a more detailed texture and seems to offer better quality compared to the first model, it not only understands the prompt better, but also improves the image quality a little, in my opinion. The second and third models produce very similar generations, but in some cases, I've seen better results with the third model, such as improved texture, sharper details, and fewer errors. Let's try another seed. Here again, the second model seems to perform better than the first one and is quite different. The third model, however, appears to be clearer for example, the welding in uh, this image seems more smudged in the second model, whereas the texture on the head is more clear and sharp in the third model. Uh, moving to another seed, it's clear that the first model produces different results each time compared to the second and third models. The first model also seems to have fewer details compared to the others. If we compare the red LED area in the second and third generations, you can see that the third model has more details. I would recommend choosing the model that your video card can handle. On my video card, the difference in speed between models was about one second. The third model took longer to load on the first generation, 
but was faster afterward. So I'll probably use uh, the third model for simple workflows, the second model for more complex ones, and the first model on an older computer. Now let's compare it with an SDXL model like Juggernaut X, even though it's not a completely fair comparison since the, I mean, the base SDXL model was much worse than the fine-tuned models. It's still useful to see how it stands up against Juggernaut. Uh, I'm deleting the second and third uh, workflows and leaving only the first one. Then I'll select all nodes and copy them. Next, I'll load a basic SDXL workflow and paste the SD workflow into it. This way we have both workflows on the same canvas. Just like before, I need to convert the text encoders to inputs so I can then connect them to the primitive positive and negative nodes. We also need to convert the seed to an input so now we can connect the primitive node with the seed to it. I will change the seed setting from fixed to increment. So the first model is Juggernaut X and the second model is the best SD3 medium, the one with floating point 16. Let's arrange everything a bit so it fits on the screen. I'll change the prefix of the saved images to identify which image comes from which model. Then I'll start the first generation and there will obviously be differences. We'll see which model performs best in what aspects soon. Um, I'll add the positive prompt below so you can see what I'm, I'm using for each. On the left is SDXL and on the right is SD3. Uh, let's start the comparison uh, for the robot prompt. The SDXL model produced a more detailed robot, which I kind of like. On the other hand, the SD3 model has a less detailed robot, but is sharper with the rust appearing more clearly uh, for this portrait of a woman. Uh, I included studio light in the prompt because I like that effect and it can create some nice rim lighting. However, I didn't expect it to be incorporated into the image as it was in the SD3 result. In the close-up portrait, the lighting effects are visible again, and there's also an extra hand included. Let's see how it handles holding objects like a mug. The SDXL model shows some distortions in the fingers, but handles the morning light better. The SD3 model has six fingers on the hand, but offers nice overall contrast with the face appearing clearer. The ultimate test, uh, generating a hand. Um, it seems both models struggled with this. Let's try generating a woman's hand instead. It's a total fail as well. So if you want to avoid issues with hands, avoid including them in your prompts. Instead, consider putting them in pockets or not specifying that they're holding something. For a knight holding a sword, the SDXL model produced slightly better results than the SD3 model. The SDXL model depicts the sword more accurately for this prompt and seed. For landscape photos in general, SD3 provides better texture such as in grass and leaves, while SDXL tends to be more blurry. In this case, SDXL seems to do a better job on macro photos of a bee on a flower. While SD3 is sharper and clearer, it's less accurate. For this photo, both models produce some nice results. Again, SD3 seems to be a little sharper. Remember, I have mentioned not to ask for hands holding something. In this case, SD3 understood the prompt better by showing one hand instead of two, like SDXL. But it still messed up the hand. For a red sphere on top of a blue cube, SD3 got it right the first time. On the second seed, it improved a bit, but mixed some blue into the green background. Overall, SD3 handled complex prompts better. Uh, for this image of a cat and a dog, SD3 achieved better accuracy overall, although the animals are still a bit deformed. On Hugging Face, they have some sample prompts, so let's test a few of those as well. For this complex prompt, SD3 understood hair made from the colors of the Aurora Borealis better, while SDXL placed it behind. For the Warrior Tiger prompt, SD3 correctly rendered the text on the flag, showing it handles text a bit better than SDXL. For text that is not in English, uh, SD3 can still struggle, but it tends to make fewer errors compared to SDXL. If the word is in English and is short, SD3 usually produces more accurate results. SDXL, on the other hand, can still fail frequently. For this cartoon illustration, both models failed with the number of legs. However, SD3 got the plain white background right. On the second seed, SDXL corrected this issue while SD3 failed. Here's a complex prompt created with ChatGPT, a mushroom made of ice. SD3 got it right, demonstrating its ability to handle complex prompts well, except when it comes to people at hands or limbs. And for this digital painting of a bunny, SD3 messed up the legs again, but rendered the digital painting effect more clearly. On the second seed, it improved slightly. Uh, for this vector style minimalist bat illustration, SD3 did quite well. 
However, when I tried uh, generating a gnome head, it initially produced only a silhouette. Um, on the second seed, it improved a bit. For a coloring book page style, the SDXL illustration looks nice but introduces some gray shading. On the other hand, SD3 provides a clear black on white design with no shading. Though the design itself is less attractive, it seems to depend on the prompt as well. For this unicorn, SD3 produced a simpler design, but again, messed up the legs. SDXL created a more complex design. And this might be due to the juggernaut model being fine-tuned with more images, possibly including more coloring pages compared to the original base model. For the watercolor painting, both models produce different styles. While SD3 has better watercolor texture, it seems a bit heavy on contrast. From a distance, it looks almost like a vector style. For the sticker illustration, both models produce some cute results. For this fantasy orc, uh, I like the quality of the painting produced by the SD3 model, but I wish it hadn't messed up the ears. As you can see from the tests, SD3 struggles significantly with people, limbs, and so on. We expected SD3 to outperform SDXL, but in some areas, it falls short while excelling in others. This may be due to heavy censorship, which uh, impacts its accuracy when dealing with uh, anatomical details. Uh, they've mentioned that this is the medium version and an improved version will be released, so we'll have to wait and see. I plan to use SD3 for images with text, landscapes, food, object photography, and some illustrations, depending on the, the prompt. It produces great results in some cases, but can be an epic fail in others, which can be quite frustrating. I'll use uh, SDXL for people, animals, and various illustrations since it seems more accurate. If you found this useful, please leave a like or a comment and check out the Discord server or my Facebook group, Pixaroma Community. Thank you for watching and have a great day.